What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. Today's episode is going to be entirely different than we normally do. I had uh, gotten some requests to do a podcast just explaining more about the Diesel Podcast itself. Myself answering some questions about what kind of truck would I buy, my opinions on things. So I thought I would sit down and answer those questions. So it's going to be fun. Before I get into answering those, I want to remind you guys, save 20% on Kershaw Knives at kershaw.kiausa.com. It's a great way to get something for everyday carry at home, at the job site, fishing, hunting. They have a lot of cool products, and we appreciate them offering that 20% off code to our listeners. We know every little bit helps in this economy and you know, saving a little money on some fun gear is definitely something that uh, we all appreciate and like to take advantage of. So on our Discord, I had asked some of our listeners to let me know, hey, what would you guys you know like me to answer? So this is going to be kind of fun because some of this stuff I've never really thought about. So you're going to be hearing it the first time that I answer these questions. So somebody asked, what is the best first diesel truck? And for this one, I really have to stop and, and I think I have to separate them between a pre-2007 and a half truck and then something that's newer because I think they're vastly different as far as how much they cost, what you can do to them, um, different upgrades. So if I was to take something that was pre-DPF, pre-EGR, um, you know, depending on the, on the truck, so say before 2007 and a half, I would have to say... For cost of ownership, the best one to get into that you could work on yourself, you got a ton of aftermarket support for, would either be a 12-valve or 24-valve Cummins or, or a common rail. So basically any of the five nines. They do command a higher price as far as purchase, you know, purchasing one with lower miles, but there's so much that you can do to them. They're relatively simple compared to other designs. So I think that would be the best first diesel truck to have, and it's something that you can grow with. So if you just want you know, 400, 450 horsepower daily driver towing a trailer every now and then, or you have a goal to one day be in UCC or any of the competitions out there, it gives you the most ability to grow. Now, as far as the new ones, that's where it gets a little bit tougher. And I've done a lot of podcasts with different companies talking about transmissions and turbo kits and things that can happen with the trucks that have DPFs and EGRs and DEF fluid. And this is really tough as well. I think I don't even know if I can answer this one just because, you know, if I think of a Ram, you have six, seven Cummins, it's been out for a while. It's proven. There's a lot of aftermarket support, depending on the transmission, whether it's a six, eight RFE or, or an ASIN, there are some upgrades, but they don't tend to be as strong as the offerings from Ford and GM. So I guess it really depends on the power level that you may take it to or the upgrades that you might have planned. I think of a Duramax, you know, I think of great stock performance, awesome ride. If it's an LML, you know, you got tons of options for Allison six speeds or an LMM. Um, the L5P, you know, getting into the 10 speeds are a little bit different, but you have great stock performance. And the only real downside that I can see to some of those model years is the CP4 and some of the issues that people have with Ford. You know, I think of great transmissions. I think of a really quick spooling turbo, a truck that is a lot of fun to drive. The styling on them, especially 2017 plus is awesome. So I think it really depends on your goals and ultimately, which one do you think looks better? You know, I sometimes myself, if I'm browsing websites, looking at local dealerships, I can flip flop. You know, I'm at heart. I love the Cummins engine. That's, I can't say that I'm a Dodge guy. I'm more of a Cummins fan, but I have owned a Duramax before. I haven't owned a Power Stroke, but I've you know ridden in plenty of them and been around them. And I think they all have benefits. So you really just got to sit back and ask yourself, what are my build plans? Which one do I like the most? And you know how long do you plan on keeping it? And how far do you want to take it? And I think that really becomes important when you look at old versus new and which one you're going to buy. I think the older ones offer you a higher upside with power, with modifications, with lower cost of upgrades, but they don't have the creature comforts that the newer trucks have and all the technology. This next question said, what's the podcast history and dream builds? And the podcast history, before we ever started doing the podcast, I worked in diesel um, for an aftermarket company. And I would go to shows or there would be in-house events or, you know, just chatting with people on the phone from other companies where I would have, I think, the ability and the privilege to spend more time with them then if I was, you know, a truck owner at an event and, you know, they're at the, at their booth and you only get a few minutes to chat with somebody. So I would hear these stories, hear these, uh, 
you know, stories about business, about parts, about racing, their, their philosophy on things. <clears throat> and we thought, hey, that would be a great way to be able to bring that information to truck owners out there because everything else at that time, and this was six years ago, it was really, you know, it was technical information. Um, you could find write-ups on builds. Forums were really big back then. But you never really heard the human side. You never really heard about the struggles, um, the obstacles that um, either shop owners or the CEOs of companies had overcome to to bring their product to market. Their product to market. So that was really how we started. And you know, through my previous job, I had gotten to know people, you know, in diesel. So I think the first episode we did was with Ryan Milliken, which I've known him for about ten years, eleven years. Um, we had Levon Miller on, um, Dimitri, a lot of different guys that I had just known through being in the diesel industry. And from there, it grew and branched out and sort of took on a life of its own. And we'd get recommendations to have this racer on or this person that made this part, whatever it might be. And it just it, it just grew faster than we could ever have imagined. And now, most of the time when I'm doing podcasts, I have never talked to the person before. And we chat a little bit beforehand, but... You know, I, I haven't known them for a decade plus, didn't know the first truck they had, didn't watch their company grow. So it's been really cool to test myself and be able to, I, I guess, get more comfortable, you know, in my skin doing a podcast, which leads into yeah, another question we had got. I think these tie together really well. Somebody had asked on Discord, do you have a degree in journalism or how did you get good at doing interviews? This is really funny because naturally I'm, I'm more of an introverted person there's a few topics a few things that i can talk all day about and trucks is one of them but if it doesn't have to do with a handful of things normally i'm more reserved and sit back and um you know kind of just absorb everything around me but when it comes to trucks i'm genuinely curious and i want to learn as much as i can about parts trends we've done some epa episodes lately learning about um you know the law government um, the Clean Air Act. I'm just naturally curious to absorb all the information I can. So whenever I sit down on one of these podcasts, I think if I was listening to this, what question would I want to know? What thing would be interesting to me to relate to, you know, my truck? What if I don't want a race truck? What if I just want a little bit more power to tow? Do, you know, would I focus this whole episode, this whole episode on a 3000 horsepower build or if I have a daily driver and I am looking for that 3000 horsepower build, I'm probably going to ask more detailed questions. Um, if it's about a race truck, about safety, uh, about billet blocks, about s suspension, about the support network, about how to build a budget for my race team, how to build my team, which you may not ask if you're towing a trailer, just daily driving a truck. So I always try to do that. I don't know if that makes me good at doing this, but I've always just tried to ask questions that, that I would want to have the answer to. I don't have a background in journalism. Um, I studied something entirely different in college that I realized a few years after graduation that I didn't want to work in it. Um, I got started actually in construction management. And at that time it was just booming. And I really liked um, kind of the X's and O's and the process and the logistics of you know, looking at home plans, getting a building material list put together, sourcing the materials. How do I get them to the job site? When's this subcontractor showing up? Um, what does the GC need help with? The architect has questions. And this was right around 2008, 2009, when the housing market just crashed. So I was able to watch, you know, a very vibrant company slowly start to decrease its, the employees that it had started to shrink the budget and the economy got worse and worse and worse till, you know, I was like one of the last people that was at this company doing what I did. And then finally the owner just had to close their doors. And I remember sitting there thinking, you know, I have a college degree. I've done things that, you know, society, my parents, my family told me that I needed to do to be successful. And here I am sitting in this position where my company just closed its doors. And I thought really long and hard about what do I want to do? Cause I poured so much time and effort and travel time and I would drive to job sites and you know, even travel out of state and do different things. If I'm going to do that, what can I do and truly enjoy it? And at that time, and even still today, the thing I was passionate about was trucks. And I thought, what can I do? Not just trucks, but really diesel trucks. What can I do in the diesel industry 
where I can enjoy every day of it. It doesn't feel like work. I can talk about parts, network with people, see builds, help customers, absorb all the information I could. So that's really, I think, where the personal side of how I try to host these in my background, you know, fits into how I do an episode. Um, Another part of the question was, what was your inspiration for getting into this? And I think I think I touched on it in the beginning about wanting to tell a story and wanting to share with you guys what I had heard, you know, kind of behind the scenes at events or a race. But in doing these, there's something else that's inspired me as well. This was probably year, I want to say year two, I think. And I had done an episode with a guest and they were talking about why they started their shop and it, you know, it was difficult to get going and it was a very inspirational story. And one of our listeners had messaged in and we weren't getting, you know, at that time there weren't tons of downloads. You know, I, I was still learning <laughs> how to operate the equipment, um, you know, how to kind of talk through these and, and just try to feel more comfortable with it. And this guy sent an email and he said, Hey, I heard the episode that you recently did. I love diesel trucks. I'm a mechanic by trade. I work for this company. And I've always been, I've always thought about starting my own business. So my wife and I are on a road trip and we pull over and I don't remember if she said it or he said it, but they said, Hey, we need to stop and listen to this. And then after they listened to it, he decided to start a business. They started, they decided to start it together. And it was at that moment, it clicked for me that these conversations that I would have with somebody over, you know, the phone or video conferencing, like now um, with video had an actual impact on people's lives. And that story, you know, I get goosebumps with it today, just thinking about it, is that isn't just a decision that somebody made to change a career. That's something that can improve their quality of life, the quality of life for their family, their children. It's a business they could hand hand down. It's something that helps the community. And I think there's nothing more powerful that I can do with the interests that I have than to be able to try to help people change their lives for the better. And through that, I've always tried to find those stories. I did an episode with David Shepard a couple of years ago where he was talking about, um, he owns Hoos- uh, Hoosier Diesel in Indiana. And he was talking about how he had a heart attack and his weight loss journey and the process that he went through to get healthier and how it's made him a, bez- a better a business person, um, a better person all around what that's felt like. And that inspired me as well, because someone out there is going to hear that somebody out there, it might not be necessarily say, um, you know, getting in shape. It could be with any number of different things we all face in our lives, but somebody can hear that somebody can get inspired and it goes beyond the talk about parts, turbos, who has the fastest truck, which one's the best, which one's the worst, which one sucks. And it's about real things that we deal with every way. And I also think through the pandemic and COVID and the separation and the lockdowns, people have really been searching for that human side and, Something that I don't mind talking about is emotion. I don't mind talking about um, philosophy. I don't mind talking about team building. I don't mind talking about overcoming obstacles because I think that's something that just inherently kind of is missed in automotive. We're all, you know, it's some definitely more than me. I'm not that tech. <laughs> I'm not that technical when it comes to repairing things. I can understand the process, but I'm not a mechanic. I'm not a builder. I'm not a machinist. But we're all hard workers. We're tough. Um, we're go-getters and it can be hard sometimes to stop and think about the emotional side of things. You know, are we spending enough time with our family? Are we checking in on our friends? Are we looking and trying to help our employees grow? Are we looking at ourselves and saying, Hey, how can I grow and be a better boss, a better podcast host, a better anything that we do. And so I love talking about that stuff. And I really appreciate when guests, no matter what they own, what they do want to come on here and talk about it. I love it. All right. So this next question says, what is your name? What is your quest? And what is your favorite color? So I think you guys know my name is Patrick. My quest, I kind of touched on my quest is really to bring a human side to stories about trucks that we love, a lifestyle that we love, a culture that we love, and be able to have there be one source where you can find inspiration, learn about your favorite turbo, your favorite racer, learn about topics that are going to impact the vehicles that you buy ways that you can get involved and just feel connected despite time distance. You know, we don't have to be, I don't have to be on a stage, you know, in a city that you're in for us to be able to talk. You can tune in on your phone, on YouTube, 
anywhere that you listen to podcasts and you can hear somebody's story, learn something about your truck, make the right decision for your turbo, your transmission. So that's my quest. What is my favorite color? That's a tough one because I always think of colors is in truck colors. So I love bright silver metallic when it comes to like a third gen Ram. I just love that color. Um, but I'd have to say my favorite would probably be victory red from GM. I love that red and I've always wanted a truck in that color. I know that they can be sort of tough to take care of and prevent swirls and things like that, but that's probably my favorite color. All right. After having so many interviews and hearing all your opinions about trucks, what single diesel would you get if you could have your dream? This I know has definitely changed over the years. When I was younger, I wanted to go fast. I wanted to have the most powerful street truck that I could afford to build that could get me to work and back and you know I could use on the weekends. But having gotten a bit older, I've kind of started to value the reliability, the creature comforts a little bit more. But then on the other side, I just love simplicity. And I see you know, vehicles every year, forever. They just get more complex every year, um, whether it's gas or diesel or now electric. And I think the one that I would want the most, money not being an object, would be a low mile 12 valve. I know that the manuals are popular and this probably isn't going to be a popular opinion, but I just don't like to drive manuals. I can, I do not operate one, but I like automatics and I would love to have probably a 47 R8. So 94, 95 Dodge 12 valve. I might even go regular cab. I know it's not necessarily practical. I just love the look of them. Um, so that would probably be the truck. And I don't know, I don't know how far I would take the build. This kind of leads into the other question is what would be my you know dream truck and what plans would I have for in the future? I think it would probably start small kind of like we all do. So I would probably you know do some pump upgrades, turbo, head studs, valve springs, definitely build the transmission. Um, I don't think I would go too crazy with like a race transmission setup, but definitely build it flex plate, build it input. I get stuck. I, I've asked transmission builders, should I do build it output, stock intermediate, build intermediate, stock output, which is easier to fix. I'm probably not going to race this thing. I guess Dave Gorin brought up a good point about stock intermediates is if it's on a core or my core, how many miles are on it? How many, you know, how much shock load has it taken? You know, I might not be at the power level to break it, but could I with higher mileage? You know, I would probably, I think I would go build it output and source uh i would probably do i don't know if i do build intermediate that, that's a tough one i'd cross that bridge when i came to it i know from there i would get into turbo upgrades probably compounds i've done the big single thing it, that's fun it's great but like i said as far as how i would use it which would be more driving at elevation um i live in colorado so you know the elevation goes from five thousand to as far as where I travel, eight or 9,000 feet. So I think compounds would fit me better there, um, a quick spooling set. And I would just want to drive it. I know I'd feel a little guilty depending on how low the mileage was, how many miles I put on it because they're, you know, they're the modern day muscle cars. And that one was the, I think the one that kicked it all off with making power. Um, it's probably something, you know, mild, probably 550, 600, 650. And I would just want to enjoy it and just know I had something that was Simple, run my fuel additives to help lubricate the fuel system. Um, do wheels and tires, something real mild with the suspension. And just enjoy something I couldn't have when I was a kid. I would see them. But I, you know, when I started to get into trucks, they had, you know, been out for 10 years or so. And I was into the common rail stuff. And that was something else that someone else had asked me is, how did you get started in diesels? And I've touched on it a little bit in podcasts. And that was, uh, I actually had this uh, friend of mine on the podcast two or three years ago. And I had met him when I lived in California. He was in the Marine Corps. And I had just bought a brand new half ton truck. And it was like when the Hemi commercials were popular. And I was young and I was dumb. And I'm like, oh, I need to get a Hemi. So I bought one. And he got back from deployment. And next thing I knew, he had this power stroke. It was brand new 2005, six liter, extended cab, long bed, four wheel drive. Next time I saw it, it was lifted on 35s or 37s. Next time I saw it, he had, I don't know if it, what tuner he had on it. I think it was an SCT. Um, had that Banks intercooler, the uh, high ram intake, air intake and stuff. And there was a 
track. I think it's closed now. It was just like this weekend, eighth mile drag strip where you could go down. I think it was on Friday nights. So him and I would go down there and I said, Hey man, I, I, you know, I want to race you. Let's see what, let's see what it can do. And I remember he, I didn't know he put it in four high then. I didn't know what that was, but the light turned green. He took off and just, I don't know how many truck lengths he put on me. Six, seven, five. It was a lot. And I remember after that, I was like, I bought the wrong truck and I would chat with him about it. And he, you know, subscribed to the magazines. And anytime I went over to his place, he'd have them. I read them. And he always kept talking to me about how I should have bought a five, nine. I should have bought this Oh five or this Oh six, this Oh seven, five, nine. There's so much more I could do to it than I can this six liter. So that always stuck in my head was, all right, he owns a diesel. He likes to do stuff to it. And he wishes he would have bought this, this five, nine common rail. Maybe that's what I should focus on. So when it came time for me to get a new truck, that's what I honed in on was I want to get a five, nine, this, you know, guy that knew more about him than I did, that we would go to events and chat about trucks and, you know, I'd help him do stuff on it. That's what he wanted. That's, that's what I should look at. I, you now granted, I wasn't exposed that much to Duramax trucks Then I didn't have any friends that had them. So I really wasn't around at that time. But if I went back, you know, I either would have looked at an LBZ or the, uh, like 06 or 0759 common rail, but that's what, that's what got me hooked. And that's why and there's another reason I love doing these stories with you guys is I love to hear how you got into them, how the, the relationships that, you know, maybe start with going to an event and you see these trucks going down the track, it hooks you and you turn it, you know, into a passion or a career or a business. It's so cool to hear how we all get bit by the diesel bug. And I love to share that so that we can bring new people in so that, um, you know, the next generation, these trucks just aren't archaic or boring vehicles that are out there. People say, Hey man, these are really cool. I love how I can hook to a trailer, take you know, a bunch of people with me, go to the mountains, go to the lake, go to the beach. Um, I can go hunting with it. I can do these different things. I can also go to the track. I can have fun with it. I can get decent fuel economy. I can tow, you know, as much as I need to, I got increased payload. So I want to get people excited about that, especially the, the younger crowd. And to have them see that there's a bunch of different paths forward for them, whether they love the Ford OBS body style, they love second gens, they love six liters, which are really popular right now with, um, you know, the cost you can get for one and the amount of aftermarket parts and performance that they've grown. There's a lot of bang for the buck there. So I want them to know there's a place for you in this community. Jump on in, you know, no matter what brand you have, no matter what year it is there's something for you and get them hooked. Like we're all hooked. All right. Well, I think I answered all the questions. This was really fun. If you guys want to hear more of these in the future or want me to answer something specific, whether it's about, you know, more about the podcast or more about, you know, really anything, you know, feel free to join our discord. You're going to see a a link uh, or code up on the screen. There's always a link on our YouTube videos for it as well. It's completely free to join. I love seeing you guys over there. I'm always checking what you guys are asking or talking about or sharing your builds nights, weekends, during the week. So make sure you head on over there. Let me know. I'd love to see you guys there. I also want to give a shout out to some of our Patreon supporters. And, uh, you know, they do a lot to help us grow with some of the things we want to do visually and, and with audio and other things um, that we want to do. But Tyler Lowen at 23 Diesel writes Diesel Services, Caleb, our other Patreons, th- those of you that subscribe on all the podcast apps, YouTube, you guys keep us going. And I don't just say that, you really do. We've had a fantastic week, Um, actually the last two weeks with a number of downloads, more than we've ever had. And we reach, I think one video on YouTube is like 32, 33,000. When this airs, it might be 35. But seeing that you guys are learning and thinking about things and asking questions, that's what what makes me do four of these a week. That's, That's why we went to this many, was there's so many requests for information. One or two a week just isn't enough. And it, it is hard work, it's not easy. Uh, for myself or the team here to you know edit them put them together Uh, but that's what we love to do and this is our full-time job i should probably answer that Um, somebody a while ago had asked that is you know do you guys do this full-time and we do and that's something that's really important to us because if it wasn't and i did this in another capacity say i owned a diesel shop or something like that I think creatively it would limit what I could do. It could limit the brands that I talked to, the topics that I covered, um, the guests that I had on that might not be 
strictly about diesel trucks. It might be more business related. And ultimately, we wanted that freedom to be able to tell any story anytime, not have to be constrained by, you know, is somebody going to order a part from our website? Or can I talk about this subject? Or, you know, does this guest, do they buy parts from us where we can put them on the podcast and give them exposure? I didn't want to do any of that. I wanted to have people on who had the freedom to tell their story, talk about the part, talk about whatever it is they wanted to talk about and be able to reach diesel truck owners. So um, I did forget about that question, but wanted to work it in. All right, guys, till next time, keep the shiny side up.